and thank you for joining us. This is the Ariel for Real from Dundas, and today I'm happy to have with us the, um, the nice folks from uh, Center 6, and they will share with us their great success story about how they actually empower their customers uh, embedding and integrating analytics into their own existing applications. Um, so most of the presentation today will be handled by um, Center 6, uh, uh, only Bland Parrish and Chris Brady, that will walk you through both the way they went to market, um, the, uh, choice they, the choice they made, as well as the actual uh, live product they've developed. So we'll be spending a lot of time actually demoing the, uh, the solution and showing you specific um, examples of how they've um, customized and created analytics for their customers. Um, just before we get started with uh, the Center 6 story, I know that a lot of you are new to a Dundas uh, as a whole. So a couple of a, uh, um, short slides about Dundas and, and, and who we are and what we do, and then I'll pass it on to a, uh, the folks in Center 6. So for, you, for those of you who are new to Dundas, uh, we, we have been around actually for quite a while now, uh, more than 20 years, coming into our 25th year this, this April. So uh, uh, definitely uh, long a long uh, history in, in data visualization, different product lines uh, along the years, uh, but always with one uh, very specific motto. Uh, it was always very critical for us to make sure that you can easily achieve most of the uh, common use cases, but then beyond the common use cases, you can always go and reach out of the box and uh, achieve all the other uh, um, use cases, challenges, business requirements that they, uh, you may be faced with. Um, so definitely flexibility is the, the uh, core of our product, um, trying to achieve that with uh, a lot of KBs that we offer out of the box, as well as the option to uh, extend and integrate further. Um, and achieve additional solutions that they are not necessarily developed uh, as a built-in feature. Specifically about our platform, uh, Dunas BI, uh, it is designed to meet different types of user needs. Um, so if you think of your data sources, really from that point on, Dunas BI allows you different types of users in the organization to interact with different data sources as a consumer, as analysts exploring the information, or as a, a professional trying to tailor different data models that will serve the, uh, the rest of the organization. So a lot of different types of data flows available in the system, a lot of different options you can deliver um, the information to consumers and allow them to interact with the information. All of this is powered by um, great collaborations and governance say, capabilities allowing you to administer the solution and a set of open APIs across the entire application. Um, so everything you'll be seeing in the uh, demo that the uh, Center 6 will be showing you today is actually powered by open APIs allowing you to go beyond the uh, user interface and extend the solution or customize it the way you would need to uh, with those APIs. Um, in terms of the, the actual capabilities, the, uh, uh, the range of capabilities starts as mentioned from the uh, data preparation allowing you to uh, uh, connect to different data sources, uh, manipulate your data sources, uh, your data models and create some kind of a, uh, a unified data layer that allows uh, and power data analytics by other consumers. Um, those analytics can be done on top of the in-memory um, analytics uh, based on our in-memory engine, can be uh, using formulas or a, uh, integration with R script that you have uh, available to your organization, um, as well as built-in hierarchies, metric sets, period or period analysis, and of course from that on being able to visualize and present information uh, using rich visualization, all HTML5 base allowing you to consume the information on multiple devices and share and collaborate with your uh, colleagues. Again, the extensibility at the bottom here, powering all of that, so very important for us to be able to uh, allow you to customize and, and go into different uh, use cases and scenarios uh, with uh, CSS styling, scripting, or the APIs themselves. Um, and on the left, you'll be able to get administration capabilities, allowing you to govern the solution and deploy it at scale. So with that, um, I do want to uh, hand over to the, uh, uh, the team over from uh, Center 6. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves. But really, what I want you to uh, get out of this uh, session today, out of this webinar, is basically understand how they went about uh, their solution, how they developed it, and what they actually provide to their customers. So let me uh, turn over the presentation to uh, uh, Blaine, and he can walk you through the uh, story. Great. Thank you, Ariel. All right, I'm going to share my screen out here. Um, my name is Blaine Parrish. I'm going to hop through a little bit of background um, on Center 6. I'm going to keep it short and sweet, and then we're going to let Chris Brady and our team uh, drive, uh, drive the, the technical uh, demo and, and show some of the dashboards. Um, go ahead and 
hop over. I've only got a few slides, so I promise to keep this short. Um, this is me and Chris here. Um, a little bit about Center 6. Um, we are based in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we're a small team, a team of six. Um, we work with a lot of contractors as well, but uh, we've kept the team uh, small over the years. I'm calling from Denver uh, today, and Chris is calling from Florida. Um, and our focus as a company is very simple. We, we provide business intelligence for the home building vertical market. Um, we've got a long history in home building and uh, kind of jump into a little bit about that, that history. Um, during the 1990s, late 90s, all the way through 2009, um, Chris and the rest of the team and I, we spent a lot of time in the home building market um, on the IT side, working primarily with big ERP systems. So home building is no different than, and than any other large industry. We all have these big ERP systems, um, and um, working with the ERPs, and especially the data within the ERPs can be challenging. And one thing we found particularly challenging was getting the data out of these big ERPs. Um, and so in 2009, we founded Center 6, and the whole premise of Center 6 is to make working with home builder ERP data easier. Um, when we started in 2009, we launched with our very first product. It's called Inform Excel Analyzer, which is an Excel-based tool. It makes it very easy for any end user uh, to work with their data real-time, their ERP data real-time in Microsoft Excel. In 2013, we launched our second product, which was Inform Excel Data Mart, which takes all this this ERP data, and we made it available in a SQL database um, to make it very easy for users to do to work with that data and do things other than um, just connect to Excel with their ERP data. Um, and that that ERP data that we had in DataMart was really a, a goldmine um, of of information, and our customers came to us and said, hey, Blaine, we love the data that's in in DataMart, but we'd like to do more with it. Um, and we had initially pushed our customers to the marketplace. Um, we hadn't planned, when we, we launched Datamart, we hadn't planned to get into the, the, the visualization um, market because there's a lot of vendors out there, there's a lot of competition out there, and we thought, you know, we could just lead our customer base uh, to the marketplace and they can pick and choose whatever product they want. Um, and we heard pretty, pretty, pretty clearly from them that that wasn't what they wanted. They didn't want to be pushed in the marketplace to have to sift through and, and, and weave through all the different products and offerings out there. They came to us and said, no, we want you to provide everything um, end to end, including the visualization um, of all that data that's, that's sitting in Datamart. So in 2016, January of 2016, we launched our third product, um, which is Inform Excel Dashboard. Okay, and that's what we're going to cover today is the Inform Excel dashboard product. Um, this slide here is just a, a quick visualization um, that shows you um, the three different products, um, Analyzer, Datamart, and Dashboard. Analyzer, again, is Excel-based for all your users. Datamart um, is an aggregation of all that ERP data, as I mentioned. It makes it easy for your, your power users to, to reach into SQL Server and work with that ERP data. Um, and then Dashboard. Um, Dashboard was a product that we didn't have until last year, um, and when we went out to the marketplace to pick the vendor that, that, that we wanted to work with, we, we spoke with a, uh, a lot of different software companies. Uh, we looked uh, heavily at Tableau, Solution, Microsoft, MicroStrategy, um, uh, ClickView, you know, the, 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 the works out there, and as soon as we came across Dundas, it was very clear that that was going to be the partner that we wanted to work with. Um, not only was the technology above and beyond some of the other other companies, which really were, the, when you look under the hood for some of the other vendors out there, it's there's a lot of legacy technology, right? The, the Dundas technology was very, um, was very modern relative to, to many of the vendors in the, in the marketplace. Um, but, but Dundas as a company made it very clear that they wanted to work with us as a partner. And we didn't necessarily get that sense um, from all the vendors. So um, it, it was pretty clear as soon as we came across uh, Dundas BI that uh, that, that was, that was going to be the, the product that we wanted to work with. Um, and we kicked off a relationship with, with Dundas and we've not looked back since. Um, here we are today doing this, doing this webinar. Um, so that's a little bit of the, the story um, with us. Um, what we have done with this dashboard product is we have, we have white labeled it and it's, it's currently branded. Um, to our customers, because our customers wanted us to provide that end-to-end -end solution. It's branded as Inform Excel dashboard, but, but the framework and the, the underpinnings is all Dundas BI. 
Okay. Um, so that's a little bit of the backstory. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Chris, and she's going to show you some examples of dashboards, and uh, she's going to show you a little bit uh, under the hood. All right. And thanks, uh, Blaine. Just to quick uh, um, comment, you can ask questions using the uh, GoToWebinar questions panel. So if you have any questions uh, throughout the uh, uh, demo, um, if you want to know more about it, please feel free to uh, type in your questions and we'll definitely ask Chris as we go along. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, as Blaine mentioned and Ariel, I'm going to simply walk you through uh, some of the solutions that we've come up with. Some of those things we're going to look at are dashboards that we've created internally for our own use uh, as part of demos that we show to prospective clients. And then I'm going to show you a solution that we've actually provided to one of our clients. Uh, one of the best things uh, about being able to demo this product and building our own dashboards is, is how excited you know customers get when they can take a look at things. Um, and, I, and I hope that you guys you know get that same excitement about the, the flexibility and the features, the functionality that are available in Dundas BI. So I'm just going to walk through a few things. Uh, if you guys have questions, like Ariel said, um, please feel free to let us know. The first dashboard we're going to take a look at, uh, it, it's called our executive dashboard. And, and people like to see this one uh, because you can see a, a whole lot of things on a single dashboard here. And from a, a data geek perspective, from, from my perspective, it's, it's really cool <clears throat> Excuse me, because it's got so many different types of controls on it. You know, I can. I have a lot of flexibility. I have parameters up here that I can uh, use to filter the dashboard if I just wanted to look at you know, certain regions of my data. All of these controls are attached. You can revisualize these controls, and your end users can do all this stuff uh, that I'm showing you. I'll try to remember to say when it's a, a technical thing that you can't do. So if you prefer to see things as a a curved area chart instead of the way it's originally displayed, you can do that kind of a thing. Uh, it's got data labels here. It's got charts. Down here in these three charts, uh, we're also using things like a line to show prior year. And these things are very simple to add uh, given the interface with Dundas BI. It, it's not a, a programming thing that you have to do. You simply use you know, the features in Dundas and you point and you click and you say, I want to do this. Uh, down here, we're using lines for something completely different as goals or as budget, as target. Over here, we've got a, a simple tree map. And this is one that always gets everybody, ooh, the typical odometer kind of a thing. Um, so they have so many different controls available to you. And you can get to all of them and play with them very quickly. So that's one of the dashboards that we like to show prospective clients real quick. Um, more one functionality one that you can add. Yeah, go ahead. One quick question that came in. Um, I'm not sure if, if that's a use case that you guys use. If not, I can answer it generally speaking from our other customer stories. But the question here is, do you have use cases where you actually use Dundas BI for uh, internal auditing uh, for management? Um, helping a management they uh, better understand uh, specific issues in their data, um, highlighting those issues and problems, more from auditing perspective. Sort of, <laughs> um, <laughs> and 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 here's here's why I say that from from our industry's perspective, auditing would be something like tracking your your expenses. Um, you can do internal audits of how you're doing performance-wise. You can create dashboards for those kinds of things. You're talking about it like a Deloitte and Touche audit. We have not actually created any uh, kinds of dashboards that respond to that kind of an audit. So I hope I answered that question. And we're actually going to cover the expense review here in a minute. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you. Um, I can add some uh, general perspective in terms of what Dynasty BI can do. So we have a lot of customers that are using Dynasty BI to uh, um, automatically detect or at least alert about the certain data issues. Um, one of the functionalities that uh, Chris may be able to show you later is what we call data-driven notifications um, that allows you to set up different conditions and rules on top of your data sets um, and alert the users via email typically or SMS 
about specific uh, issues that they uh, present with new data points that come into a um, into display. Um, so it kind of helps users avoid the need to constantly monitor and look at their data and dashboards. Automatically send and push those emails to the users whenever those data problems occur. So I can definitely uh, attest to different customers using it from auditing and from that perspective. Okay, thank you. Another thing that uh, functionality-wise that Dundas gives you is the ability to set up filters that are user-friendly. Uh, in this particular case, we've got a table down here showing some variances in your, you know, your standard red, yellow, and green. We've got a little slider up here that if I wanted to take a look at my variances um, that were only, you know, over 53 days, you know, you could do that very quickly and now your user is just looking at maybe those larger variances that they need to pay attention to. You also have functionality to do some uh, drill down capabilities. We had talked about your filters and being able to filter down to, you know, certain levels. But even within the, the visualizations themselves, this particular one is showing starts. This one is showing items, uh, units that are behind schedule. So if you click on this particular control or visualization, it takes you to yet another layer, another dashboard, where you can drill down even further and you can see in this particular region, these communities, this is the status of all of your homes under construction behind schedule and if they're 75 percent behind schedule it just shows up in red. It's a really great way for people to get down either to the nitty-gritty if they need it or as an executive to just look at an overview. So overall you know these are the ones that are behind schedule. I've got 73 under construction and 55 of those are behind schedule. But you can get down to whatever layer of detail your clients need or you need as an organization. Um, and another, sorry, yeah. another question that came in not, uh, on not that at dashboard, all. Uh, on that construction dashboard, you, you have that visual at the top there where you drill down from. Um, so um, we have a question here, what, what type of visualization is that? What are you actually using to create a type of visual? This is simply a, a chart and it is a horizontal bar chart. It's uh, so you nothing magic. Off, you just stripped off the uh, axes and the, uh, the labels, so you're just getting the, uh, the bar itself showing. Right, and the, easy, the, the navigation to the other dashboard is, is very simple to do. You simply add a navigation component to this control so that whenever anybody clicks on it, it opens up the other dashboard. Perfect. Okay, great. Yeah, so I, I guess, I mean, a lot of people didn't recognize it because of the uh, um, the axes and labels missing. So yeah, definitely just a regular bar chart, but I guess with the properties you're able to customize to look that way. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, and, and that's one thing uh, that I should have started with. Uh, everything in Dundas is customizable. If you want to change the colors, you know, when we'll look at some dashboards with light backgrounds versus dark backgrounds. You might not like blue. You might want it to be hot pink. Uh, you might want your font to be different. You might want when people hover over things for your font to be different colors. You can change all of that in Dundas. It is so flexible. Um, years ago there was a actually in our industry and I, I don't remember who it is and I, I hope I'm not violating any copyrights or anything but uh, a builder ran a um, a marketing uh, scheme that was if you can dream it you can build it and that's how you're going to feel when you're working with Dundas. if you want to display something if you want to show something in a certain way you can get there and one of the really cool things is you know after a couple of years of working with Dundas and having been involved in support for a very long time I can say that you will work with a great support team that will help you find answers to your questions. Um, I, I give them kudos all the time. It's amazing to work with these guys. Um, another great thing about Dundas is the ability to connect to various data sources. Uh, great. Blaine mentioned that you know all of the you know verticals have their own major ERPs. Well there's other things that you may want to connect to other than just your ERP data. Things like Salesforce, things like Google Analytics. Um, surveys are a big thing for our industry, customer satisfaction surveys. 
and Dundas has built-in data connectors for a lot of these big ones, Salesforce. There is a, you have to have your own account to Salesforce, but there is a, a built-in connection to Salesforce to connect to your Salesforce account to bring that data in so that you can create a dashboard for your sales and marketing team that includes not only Salesforce data, but your ERP data and Google Analytics data all in the same dashboard so that they're not having to go to multiple places to get this information. Um, and again, once you've got this Salesforce connection in Dundas, you can use all the functionality that exists in Dundas BI to start to create filters and filter your data the way that you want to and customize that data uh, and make it look the way you want it to look. You'll notice a couple of things here. We've talked a bit about the white labeling. Um, we've white labeled, you know, not only this landing page, uh, but all of these uh, dashboards we've been able to put logos on. You'll notice that getting to uh, Informing Cell dashboard has been white labeled as well. Uh, the, um, the other thing that I wanted to show you from our internal dashboards uh, is just the various ways you can do things. We talked about that construction dashboard and that bar chart without the axis that you could click on and then drill down to some more detailed data. There's a, a number of ways to do that same thing. In this particular dashboard, we've chosen to include show detail buttons so that simply by clicking that button, your users can get to another dashboard or another view of the data. And a lot of the things that we do we eventually get our clients to some sort of something that looks like an Excel chart because they are so accustomed to looking at their information this way. And once you've got it in this Excel-ish, table-ish looking format, you can still do this expansion and, and let them look at their data at the detail level that they need to, depending on what function they serve for the entity. Um, Using layers in this system, that's a, a pretty easy concept once you're playing with the system. You can give your users like a help overlay. The first time they come into a dashboard, they may want to know what this number is. You know, put a little box here that says, look, if it's green, it's good. If it's red, you're below target. And you can make these help layers as complex or as simple as you want to. One of the other fun things we did on this particular dashboard um, in addition to having parameters, we said, look, we want to look at this not only from an amount perspective. Uh, if we hover over these, you can see that these are all dollars. My actual sales amount is $5.8 million. My sales period to date is 15.2. Uh, doing a little scripting and, and aerial references earlier, we said, okay, we also need to see it uh, as a count instead of just by amount. So my sales period to date, 59, my target is 37, so I'm good on my counts, but if you remember back looking at this other layer, you know, I'm not so good on my revenue. All right, different perspectives, different ways to look at your data so that you can tell that story behind your data. That's what gets us, I don't even know if this is a real verb, but that gets us all geeked out, you know, of, of being able to take the client's data and tell them a story about their data that lets them make decisions and lets them see what is happening in their operations. Uh, so that was a couple of uh, the things that we take a look at. Uh, let's make sure that I covered everything. We talked about the different data sources, drilling down, uh, you can use it for executives. Let's take a look at some of the things that we've done for our clients. Uh, this is always fun for us because Ideally, we'll go in and we'll sit with our clients and we'll say, you know, what story do you want your data to tell or how should this be presented? And in an ideal situation, they would say, oh, we need to see this in bar charts or we need to see this in pie charts or in funnels. Uh, but the truth is, a lot of people aren't going to know. So what happens to us a lot of the time is they will hand us stuff like this. Okay? They will hand us a huge Excel sheet and this particular one has expenses, different categories, different layers, down to the accounts, just all this data. And this is just for a month. And this Excel sheet has a tab for each month. And then it is consolidated into a summary tab. What happens is our clients hand us these spreadsheets and say, 
tell us a story. Let us see what is happening. And this is one that we actually took for one of our clients uh, and created them something that tells the story of their expenses. Looking at, it, at that Excel sheet, you couldn't tell if you were over budget or under budget or which category was causing you the issue. Uh, there was no way you could present that to an executive level to say, look, here we are, here's our performance on our expenses. Um, isn't that interesting? This is the story that we've chosen to uh, tell with our clients' expense data. You, know, you can see here for their fiscal year uh, that these months are a little bit over budget. You know, we've created some drill downs to some different levels. So you can see these operations, sales, these different categories that were on that Excel spreadsheet. This is that first layer, and we've created a little control for each one of these so you can immediately see if operations, all you have to look at is what's red. Okay. I'm good on my interest in amortization, but year to date, my operations and my sales and my marketing and my G&A are all over budget. Um, so if I wanted to look at this information in a slightly different format, uh, you simply click on this, and it's going to go open up another dashboard. <clears throat> uh, wow. Sorry, I'm running this off of my client server. That took a second. And now you can see the same information in a little bit of a different format. Okay, so my operations wasn't horribly over budget, although it you know is showing as over budget. Looks like my G and A is really what's you know causing a couple of problems here. Um, so if I go back to this one, I can also go down to this operations dashboard, this operations control down here, or sales, and I can click on one of these, and it's going to take me to the detail. You know, of what's happening with my operation. It's going to come up and show me my current month and year to date. But as soon as it stops uh, spinning, this may take just a second. Wow. Sorry, am I... Love, uh, I love how you use the... Uh, um, how you help your customer move from Excel spreadsheets to uh, visuals and, and the use of waterfall charts. I think that's a uh, great use of, the, of that type of visualization that often people forget and, about. So. And a lot of people don't use waterfall charts. They'll uh, consistently use the bar charts, but the waterfall charts give them a great idea of, okay, for service compensation, you know, I was pretty steady all the way through here, but this particular month, you know, what happened here? And if I click on service compensation, it's going to take me all the way down to the account layer. You know, that first layer that we were, that last layer that we were looking at, wow, they're really having issues today. Um, way down here at this level, you know, below your upper level categories, below your secondary level, way down to the account level, you can get to that information in Dundas BI. Uh, and one of the things that I want this audience to understand, I will control some of these back. Um, you'll notice that all of these dashboards look very similar. You know, we've got the, the waterfalls down here. We've got these couple of charts up here. Um, we access this information, <clears throat> which is a bar chart showing your category. So what we didn't have to do was build every single one of these dashboards for every category and every subcategory and every account using a, a simple bit of scripting and, and aerial references at the beginning of the webinar using a simple bit of JavaScript in the ready action of the dashboard, we simply are able to uh, control things like what this tile says so that people know that they're looking at operations or they might be looking at sales. Uh, navigating from you know, one control to another dashboard is as easy as putting some filters on the dashboard and passing those parameters between the dashboard you don't even have to show them all to your end, end users if you don't need to. Chris, we have another question here from Shirley. Um, I'm not sure if you have that use case, but do you have the need to schedule reports out for, for your users? Do you have that uh, type of uh, use case? Or we have yeah, live uh, reports. Yeah, we have not done that yet. Uh, we have actually discussed that with this particular client that we're <clears throat> looking at their expense data now. 
and they are going to end up doing that. Uh, this is another thing that Ariel referenced. There's a number of ways that you can get this information to people. Um, you can rely on them to come in and look at these dashboards all the time. You can set up notifications that are uh, data-driven or they're date-time stamp-driven. Um, however you want to deliver this information to your clients or to your uh, end users, you can do that kind of a thing. You can also do things like put notes on here. Like if I'm one of the accountants and I want to be able to say, you know, to my boss, you know, okay, design expense is over, but we know why it's over. We hired six additional people, yay us. You have the ability to simply put notes on here that everybody will then see as they come in and take a look at the dashboards. Uh, so I do not have a use case set up to show you uh, data-driven or date and time-driven notifications, uh, but it is quite easy to set up. We've tested it a bit internally, and, and it's again, it's one of those point-and-click things. It Dundas did a very good job at giving us the ability to do that kind of a thing. Uh, and the audience that I'm talking to will probably appreciate this a lot. When you're looking at Excel spreadsheets and the one that we were taking a look at, your margin for error in taking data out of one system and, and plopping it to Excel, hand keying it, uh, your margin for error is, is exponential. Putting it into Dundas and just connecting straight to your data and pulling that information straight out of your ERP or out of Salesforce or wherever you're connecting to makes this data more accurate, it is more efficient for people to get to the data, and using Dundas enables you to tell a great story. Uh, let me get to one more. I wanted to show you a couple of other functions. Um, and this again is going to speak to the flexibility of Dundas BI. This is a, a sales weekly update dashboard. and if you don't look at this part, my client is learning to build things and this is great data down here at the bottom. This is Salesforce data. I'm just not wild about their design choices. So we're going to concentrate on this upper level part of this dashboard. Uh, you'll notice that there are six, seven different controls, but there, there's only one axis over here that you know reads all the way across. You know, Great, wonderful, mysterious stuff. No, not really. And I'm going to show you how we did this kind of thing. There's also another little cool feature over here um, about notes. Okay, this is going in, uh, it's getting some notes that they're putting in the system about you know the particular projects that they're looking at. And this again was not very difficult to do. So this is as far. Uh, I'm going to dive in a little technical and show you some of the development side of, of what we're doing here with this, just because those are two really cool features. Um, so I've gone into what you'll be looking at if you're developing. And to line all of these charts up, you know, the horrible complexity of it all uh, is that for each of these charts that are lined up, you had to come in here and say, align the contents with other charts. Horribly, horribly difficult. And it's, it's, it, it, Dundas just made it, I am, sorry, I'm being facetious. Dundas made it so easy for us to get to the solution that we needed for our client because they needed to see all of that information um, <laughs> like their Excel report. They wanted to see their story in their dashboard going all the way across the dashboard because that's what they were accustomed to. And we were able to give them that um, in a very clean, uh, crisp look just by some simple functionality uh, in Dundas BI. Creating this little notes uh, icon as you know, simple as creating a chart. It has the same axis as every other chart. But if I come to what is called a series here, you can see that all I did was say, make it an image. Instead of making it a bar or a point or a dot, make it an image. And I pointed to the image that I wanted it to show. And it popped up this little piece of paper looking thing. And when users click on it, it shows them the notes for whichever you know, item they happen to be on. Okay. 
So seemingly complex things uh, can be done very easily given the flexibility and the functionality uh, that you're going to have in Dundas. Uh, we talked about the scripting. Script, uh, scripting makes things so much easier. Um, and I think that's pretty much all the things that I wanted to show everybody. Unless there's something that I have completely forgotten, Ariel, that you wanted us to be able to talk to. Um, do you want to show an example or two of uh, uh, some script that you have Just to, to show how you put uh, to use the script? If you have any handy example, that would be great. If not, that's fine as well. Yeah. Let me pull this one up and let's edit this and check it out. Uh, this one may take a bit. Let me see if I can come back over to the center six one. And I may not be able to find it as quickly as I would like because I don't know. Yeah. So we had talked about this sales dashboard and simply um, showing as an amount or account. And this is a very simple script. And it's just saying if the this control equals amount, then hide the count layer and show the amount layer. But if it equals count, show the count layer and hide the amount layer. Not rocket science. You know, knowing the dundas.context.baseview you service, yeah, that takes a minute to learn. But again, you will be helped along in all of this uh, by the support team at Dundas. I'm pretty sure that uh, they helped me write this. I'm pretty sure I didn't write that. Uh, so that's a, a real quick example. And if this one came back up, I didn't want to come up at all. So this is checked out. Uh, let me open this one. This particular one is uh, one that we had talked about earlier as well. So if I edit this, and I'm just going to check this out. One of the things that we've done in this as far as scripts go, this is the one we talked about in the ready action of the dashboard itself. Uh, this particular script is simply setting the title of the dashboard. You know, again, by your dundas.context, yaaa, you know, setting some variables, doing some substring, doing some concatenation, and then saying, put that as my dashboard title. So, all of this stuff can be controlled and manipulated by you as the designer so that your end user's experience is exactly what you want it to be without having to, you know, create a different dashboard to show the same data, just filtered differently. Okay, and one more question that came in. Uh, what did you do to set up the tiles with images on the uh, landing page that you have there? Are those the static images or? How did you actually set up? Uh, so the little pages back on the other dashboard. Yeah. I think that's landing a page where, uh, not this one. I think you have the other one where you show all the da dashboard tiles. Um, that's kind of a navigation system. Oh yeah. And again, these are just these are just rectangles. And these are just images that I have overlaid onto these rectangles and said when you click on those images, you know, open up the actual dashboard behind it. And so using any screen snipper, I would have the dashboard open. I take a quick little picture of it, you know, plop it in here. And you look at this particular thing. This executive dashboard image is just an image that I have saved out. Uh, somewhere on the on the web server. 
right? and okay. it's got an, an action assigned to it that when I click, okay, set up a navigation. This is all straight up Dundas functionality. And all I have to say is go to a different view in a new window. I pick the dashboard, and if I wanted to pass parameters, I could do that. But I don't necessarily need to do that in this particular case. But this setup and navigation is the same functionality we used when we were looking at expenses and going from you know, a, a higher level down to maybe operations, and then on operations going down to operations compensation. We were just navigating between dashboards, passing parameters between filters on each dashboard. Can I answer that so, question? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. Uh, just to summarize it, it up, you basically create your own dashboard that serves as the uh, uh, landing page for the system when people log in, and then from there they can navigate mm -hmm. using your own custom logic here. Um, I should mention that there is an option as well to use what we call a navigation a control. So if you, Chris, if you can expand maybe the components a, uh, library, um, I can show you. I can point it out. So um, Right next to the data visualization, the uh, components next to the uh, data visualization uh, at the top. Oh, <laughs> exactly. So there is a tile navigation control, um, and this can help you be a bit more uh, dynamic about the uh, tiles that you show for a navigation system. Um, so if you wanted to change the content without having to go back and choose different images all the time, um, you can definitely use this control as well and dynamically populate the list of the uh, navigation items that users will be able to access from, the, from this control. You can point it to uh, look at all the dashboards or all the dashboard and reports under a certain project or a certain folder. You can point it to just look at the item that the users recently viewed. So there's also a bunch of options if you want to go with a, uh, a bit more of a dynamic uh, navigation layout. Um, and I should mention that the uh, home screen as well can be customized by different users to include their preferred uh, items to uh, navigate to. But I definitely love the way that uh, you guys uh, kind of built your own landing page, just using the dashboard functionality uh, as a very dedicated uh, navigation system. Yeah, and one of the things that we have found with this is <clears throat> uh, the security within Dundas uh, and setting up attributes so that uh, certain users, when they log in, are directed to a certain landing page or a certain view. Uh, is is something that you know has come into play with every one of our clients. Um, another question from Vincent is asking about the uh, the drop downs you had for the account and the amount. Uh, he was asking, can it be done with the uh, dynamic measures instead of using code to hide and show layers? Um, so the answer to that is yes. I believe yes. Chris built that <laughs> dashboard before we actually introduced the uh, dynamic measure functionality, which I think came in a later version. Um, yeah. Version two. Um, so yeah, um, it could definitely be be built even without scripts. I think it was a good example to show how uh, scripts can be used. But yeah, definitely um, you can use dynamic measures and avoid uh, writing any code to uh, to have that switch between the different measures for sure. Yes. And we simply okay. haven't gone back to do it. <laughs> okay. Thank you very very much, Chris, for that great demo. Um, We'll see if there's any other questions coming back again about the, uh, the actual uh, dashboard implementation. But if not, I really uh, uh, appreciate taking the time and showing this uh, to us. I really love the way you guys help um, your customers move from Excel spreadsheets into a dashboard and visualization. And maybe that's a good segue to kind of introduce a bit more of your process and how you take this to your customers. So with that, I'm going to make Blaine the presenter again. Blaine, maybe you can walk us through a little bit of your process and how you actually onboard new customers with, a, with those dashboards. For sure, yeah. So um, I believe I'm showing my screen again here, and, and everyone should be seeing the, the product stack. Um, the, the three different products, when we look at the three different products, the first two, Analyzer and Data Mart, were very much a plug and play experience. We could um, install it with our customers and they got what they got um, and it worked right out of the box. But one of the things that we learned very quickly with the dashboard product is that when you go to visualize um, information, you go to tell a story, particularly when you're trying to address the needs of senior management, they want to see their information and their dashboards the way that they want to see it. You saw Chris's demo um, and she started off with the Inform Excel examples, right? And then she hopped over to one of our customers' um, 
uh, servers to show you some some uh, some of the customers' dashboards. They were very different experiences, and what we found with this is that with each customer, we ultimately deliver a very different experience because what they want to see um, from one customer to the next ends up being quite different. Um, and so we had to tailor the implementation of dashboard to make certain that we could address the needs of each one of our customers. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that, and I will keep it brief. Um, come, come over here. What we ultimately um, came up with is an implementation approach that allowed us um, to work very closely with each one of our clients, and again, tailor their, their final product to meet their specific needs. Um, and we started off, what would the, the, the way that we start off our implementations is with a 32-hour um, design phase. And we, we s send a couple of um, our consultants out to work with a customer. Um, and we sit in a room for two days, and we literally have a whiteboard and a conference room, and we sit with each of the department heads, and we draw out some of the dashboard examples of, of things that they want to see, right? Now this is a you know, this is a process, and and it's one thing to sit down with a VP of Sales and Marketing and listen to him or her tell you about all the great things they they want to see, and it's another thing to actually have the data, the underlying data to support it, right? So there's there's quite a process when you're sitting down going through the design phase because sometimes the things that they ask for they don't even have the data to support, right? So it ends up being this this two day process where we sit down with each again each department head um, for a, for a handful of hours, we come up with concepts and designs. Okay, then we leave and we spend the next 80 hours or two weeks during the development phase. Now, it's not to say that the development phase is, is um, all spent or these 80 hours are all spent actually designing dashboards. They're not. I want to say about two-thirds of our time is probably spent gathering the data, querying the data. Although we have a data mark to start with, it doesn't change the fact that there's still bad data, right? There's still holes in the data. Um, and so we're spending these, these 80 hours, the bulk of these 80 hours, really working with the clients to massage that data and, and correct that data to make certain that it will flow, ultimately flow into the dashboards that they want. So after those two weeks or those 80 hours, then we go back out on site and we roll it out. And this is where we're working very closely with the managers that we'd initially designed the dashboards with. Um, and we sit down with them and make certain that what we've designed um, and what we have delivered is, is exactly what they want and what they expect. Uh, we'll spend time making certain that they know how to navigate through the dashboards and we'll make any corrections. Um, and then we'll end up spending um, a day um, on site with training. So this training section here that you see 40 hours is not really entirely 40 hours worth of training. The training typically requires about one day, right? If you've got a financial analyst or you've got um, a, a systems analyst that is familiar with data and queries and, and such, uh, training that person on the Dundas BI um, product really only requires about a day. But we leave um, a series of additional hours um, after that so that we can make certain that we are available to help our client once we leave the site, we can help them um, when they um, start to develop and build out some of their own dashboards. Right? We're going to take phone calls, we're going to take emails, um, it might mean one more trip out to go visit with a client to, to make certain that, that the first set of dashboards that they create entirely on their own um, are, are a success. Um, and then we found that by the time we've wrapped this up and we've, we've allowed that customer to, to build out their own dashboard and we've kind of walked them through that process, they're off to the races. Some of the stuff that Chris was showing you um, from our client site was developed by the client. Um, and when they started the project off, they had no um, real kind of IT or, or programming experience. Um, but by the end of this, um, this implementation approach, they were off to the races designing their own dashboard, some of which Chris showed you today. Um, so this is the, the um, implementation approach that we've taken. Um, you know, for the customers, it's not cheap. Um, it does take some time, but this guarantees that we're going to deliver um, some dashboards, not just the dashboards that we have designed um, and developed for them, but it, it makes certain that they are able to, to build and um, develop the, their own dashboards once we've left their site. Perfect. Um, th thank you so much for you know going into that that as well. I know people often want to talk to us about the uh, the output, but how do you get there is is extremely important, and um, we often get questions about what the right methodology and process. I think this is it's a great recipe. I mean, of course, the number of hours can change, and, and the requirements change, and number of dashboards you'll be developing. But I really like this approach in terms of how you can quickly um, provide a customer a, a clear beginning and end to the um, process. And, how by the end of it they'll get a tangible set of a reports and dashboard they can use to 
better manage your business. So that's, that's great. Thank you very much for that. Um, we do have one more question that came in, um, back to the, uh, uh, I guess, dashboard design. Um, and the question is from Chad asking, did you guys at Center 6 determine your own color palette, or was it a, uh, done by a graphic designer? Um, how did you actually go about it? It varies, uh, and it's going to depend on the client. Some of our clients want to use their own branding, <clears throat> um, and some of our clients uh, don't really have a preference. Uh, either way, when we get that information from the client, if they give us their color palette, we do use a design consultant to say, okay, if these are my base colors, what is my color palette going to look like? Okay. Um, any more questions uh, from the audience at this point to uh, the folks from Center Six? Okay. So, uh, if there's no more questions, I'll definitely uh, I'd like to uh, thank both uh, both Lane and Chris. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your story. And uh, again. I'm as mentioned throughout uh, the webinar multiple times, really impressed with, with the way you were able to translate uh, user requirements and, and, and business processes into something which is really telling a story and helping the user uh, gain efficiencies and, and really see uh, issues in the data. It's really uh, a great story and, and thank you again for taking the time to share that with us. Thank uh, you. Absolutely, thank you. What's next, really? If there's, if there's no more questions, uh, feel free to uh, reach out to a uh, to our consultant or a, um, of course, a try it yourself. You can definitely, um, if you're not familiar with NCI, you can go into our website and uh, either try it online or do a full product download and connect it to your data sources. You can just start by watching videos, um, whatever way that works for you. If you want to get a demo as well, that's definitely uh, an option, and we can walk you through and help you set up the uh, uh, evaluation on your end to better understand how you can uh, build this type of solution, whether it's for internal usage or if you actually want to take it out to your customers, white label, integrate in your existing application. These are all things that the uh, Dunlop CI was designed to do. So thanks again, everybody, for uh, joining the webinar. And again, a special thank you for uh, uh, the guys from Standard 6. You did uh, amazingly well uh, uh, sharing your story. So um, thank you very much, and have a great day, everybody.